from the makers of Cold Water Omo. John Steed bent down and examined the body of Yule, the stockbroker. Look, Mrs. Jim, in the waistcoat pocket. Mm, ripped away completely. Yes. He was planning to come to dinner at Henry Boardman's, but uh, he was dressing, evening dress. He's been dead about three hours, about the time we started dinner. So that eliminates three suspects. Boardman left us to make a phone call, remember? You think he might have been calling one of his minions? That's quite possible. What do you make of the Boardmans? Hmm. Bluff, conservative, die-hard traditionalist. Now, she... Attractive, intelligent, expensive... Mm, and as cold as ice. Um, promiscuous. Promiscuous? Oh, beyond that, my lips are sealed. After all, a true gentleman... A true not... gentleman shouldn't know of a lady's promiscuity. Odd, though. Despite the air of studied wealth, I get the impression that the Boardman's are... Coming down in the world? Hmm... Objet d'art diminishing rapidly. No country house. <sighs> it doesn't make sense. If Boardman's involved, then why send me to Yule? I mean, why put me onto his own broker? Because he knew Yule would report back to him? Yes. Yes, you could have just hit it, Mrs. Peel. Obviously, he did report back, and it caused his death, didn't it? <laughs> The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel. The Avengers. is the wonderful new fabric conditioner that not only softens but actually rinses out hardness rinses in a new kind of softness comfort leaves your wash refreshingly young and bouncy again just a little comfort in the final rinse gives a lot of comfort to your wash softness is a thing called comfort your complexion soft and smooth. Choose Lux with its creamy, moisturizing lather and precious perfume. Lux, a beauty treatment as you bathe. Episode four of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel continue to dabble in high finance, unaware that someone in the city is preparing yet again to... Dial a deadly number. John Steed, leaving Henry Boardman's exclusive dinner party, had had a most unpleasant experience in the garage at the base of the penthouse. Two black leather-coated thugs on motorcycles had tried to run him down. One of them had died when his bike crashed into a packing case. The other had got away. Mrs. Peel, arriving on the scene, was able to give a little sympathy to Steed and suggested that they went back upstairs to the Boardman's. Steed preferred a quick visit to his broker, Brian Frederick Yule. Yule was dead. It seemed he'd died in exactly the same way as Todd Hunter. Steed had a lot to think about. A lot to think about, Mrs. Peel. Including Ruth Boardman? How did you guess? Well, you must have some evidence of her promiscuity. Um, other than first-hand experience, of course. Oh, you flatter me. Yes, ever since I met her, I've been wondering where I'd seen her before. It was when I was lunching in the bar of the Bull and Bear. She was there, drinking with Ben Jago. She left before I went over to Jago. Strange. Odd relationship. Well, I can't think why. If Jago is one of Boardman's best clients, then it would be natural they should meet somewhere sometime. Mm -hmm. Yet their uh, attitude to each other seemed to be more than uh, friendly, shall we say? I'd be prepared to bet that Henry Boardman doesn't know a darn thing about it. Well, it's just another thread in the mysterious tapestry. We'll both meet them all again very shortly. Oh? When? This wine-tasting do we've both been invited to in the cellars of the bank, remember? I'm quite looking forward to that. <laughs> The atmosphere in the wine cellars that Tuesday night was rather like a church. 
elderly imbibers walk to and fro down the racks of cobwebbed and crusted bottles. John Harvey approached Mrs. Peel. Which part of Barbados are you from, Mrs. Peel? Um, do you know the island, Mr. Harvey? I have a client who has a tobacco plantation there. Oh, that'll be the south end of the island. Yes, I believe it was. Yes, I was at the north, among the non-smokers. Oh, Mrs. Peel, good evening. Sparkling, refreshing, about a little on the frivolous side. I am? Uh, the wine, uh, the verve de filet. Would you like to try some? Thank you. Hmm. You know, I've got mixed feelings, Steed. Venerable yet devious. Ambivalent. It's not clear to me. And the wine? No, the Boardmans. Yeah. Everyone's friendly yeah. enough, but I get the feeling we're not trusted. Do you know what I mean? I certainly do. I haven't really been trusted since Eaton. Uh, Steed, I, I'd like you to try this. Oh, well, only if you'll do first service to me. And try this one. Yeah, of course. Uh, an old friend, but not at his best. That two uh, fifty-nine. Ten out of ten. <laughs> Now, you tell me all about this. Served on a silver tray, eh? I think you're trying to trap me. Trap you? Now, why should I want to do that? Hey, come along, taste it. Steed lifted the glass, sniffed the wine, and allowed it to touch his lips. I think we have him, John. Well, Mr. Steed, your opinion? Well, it's either a 65 Algerian red... <laughs> Or it's a Chateau Lafitte Rothschild. Yeah, that's better. Ah, but uh, what year, Mr. Steed? Oh, it's an old bouquet. Oh, very old. As though seeking back in the memory of time, Steed reached automatically in his pocket for his old hunter watch. He said, looking at the time, in pre-1418 war, rare vintage, pre-1914 and yet no earlier than 1880. Yeah, well, that still leaves you 34 years to play with, eh? Well... Nineteen oh eight. Boardman looked pleased. Would not be the year. Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, Nineteen oh nine from the northern end of the vineyard. Yeah. Remarkable, Steed. Mm-hmm. You have an extraordinary palate, Mister Steed. For a uh, what is it you do? <laughs> Taste wines. What else? Hey, you must have spent years in France. No, no, merely an extended leave in Bordeaux. Guest of a former minister of agriculture. It rained non-stop. This left us time to infuse over the achievements of his cellar rather than speculate on the uncertainties of the harvest. End of story. I see. I hope when the time comes you'll be equally forthcoming. Um, do you mind if I pass on? I am enjoying this. Uh, see you. <laughs> What Steed didn't know was that the whole scene in the cellar was being reflected upon a closed-circuit TV screen in a workshop not far away. A white-coated worker, Fitch, the resident genius of Warner's answering service, watched Steed at his wine-tasting triumph. When it came to the part where Steed consulted his gold watch, Fitch grinned and opened a drawer. He reached in and rummaged about until he extracted a hunter watch identical to Steed's. Yes, exactly right. Exactly the same. Fitch took up a long, thin blade and opened the back of the watch. Should be easy. Dead easy. Don't like that word, dead, Steed. Better watch that watch. In the boardman's parlor, Emma Peel was learning from John Harvey a little more about the art of big business investment. Investment's not only a question of what to buy, Mrs. Peel, it's a question of when. Buy when they're friendless. Isn't that what they say? That's quite right, but who can tell when that is? Oh, excuse me. Yes? Mr. Harvey and Mr. Warner to see you. Is this from the answering service? He has a parcel for you. Oh, yes, that's right. Show him in, please. I won't be a moment, Mrs. Peel. Harvey got up and walked the length of the long parlour. Mrs. Peel leant back in her chair, concealed from the door, and watched as Warner entered. Good afternoon. I was on my way. for another two calls to make, so I thought I'd drop this in. It's all there. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Warner. Very kind of you. Warner left, and Harvey came back to the desk, carrying a parcel. A consignment of new securities? No, just a line. Henry is trying to push amongst his friends. Hoping they'll become interested and invest in the company. Oh, here, I'll show you. You may be interested. Harvey tipped the contents of the parcel out onto the desk. They were the bleeper type of transistor receiver. Oh, yes, I've seen these in work at hospitals. Ingenious. Uh, ready for some tea, Mrs. Peel? Oh, what a nice idea. Thank you. Yeah, this way, then. Come along, John. Thanks. Time for tea. Right. Mrs. Peel followed the two men into the other office. 
The door closed. A few moments later, Ruth Boardman entered the parlour cautiously. She walked up to the desk, ignored the bleepers, and searched amongst the wrapping paper. Eventually, she found what she was looking for. She unfolded the tissue paper. Here it is. A gold hunter watch. The replica of John Steed's. <laughs> Later that night in his flat, John Steed was setting his watch to the chimes of Big Ben. Having done this, he carefully arranged his tie. Standing in front of the mirror with the contents of his pocket on the occasional table, he checked. Change, change. Keys, keys. Handkerchief, handkerchief. Doorbell, doorbell. Coming! Oh! Mrs. Boardman, and looking like someone straight off the Champs-Élysées. Thank you, Mr. Steed. May I come in? Please do. Your apartment is much as I imagined it. The very fact that you imagined it at all intrigues me. I have come to thank you for your tact. The fact that you saw me lunching with a younger man. But you see, when your husband is so many years older than you are... Why, I understand. The fact that you are even seen with a well-known, almost infamous character like Ben Jago, well, it could easily be misunderstood, misinterpreted. Mrs. Boardman moved to the table that contained Steed's things. Oh, think nothing of it. Mrs. Boardman, you are a merchant banker's wife. Mr. Jago is an investor. It seems a perfectly natural liaison. As I said, you are very tactful. Oh, not tactful. Optimistic. You see, I always admire a woman with a past. Uh, what is uh, optimistic about it? Well, just the hope that history can be persuaded to repeat itself. I think you'd better offer me a drink, don't you? John? Of course. Uh, make yourself at home, Ruth. And give her a heaven-sent opportunity to switch those watches. Mm, not very bright tonight, Steed, are you? With a final heave on the spanner, Ronnie Miller finishes changing his flat tire in just 6 minutes, 32 seconds. Well done, Ronnie. You play any other sports? I wash the car once in a while. You look very fresh, Ronnie. What deodorant do you use? Shield for sportsmen, of course. Why? It works. Shield for sportsmen deodorant won't stick, sting, or stain. In aerosol or roll-on, it's made to keep sportsmen cool and dry. Think what it can do for you. There's no dirt that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. If you use cold water Omo, it comes out very, very easily indeed. Says Mrs. Sutherland of the Inneken. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. It cleans best. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo. Cold Water Omo.